Okay, so lecture uh, lecture 12. This is a lecture with one of the longer titles and it's one of the shorter lectures. This one's this one's a really short one. Um, okay, so in this lecture we are analyzing fasteners in built-up beams. So built-up beams are beams that are made of multiple individual pieces of material that are joined together and the fasteners could be screws or nails if we're talking about wood or if we're joining uh, pieces of metal together it could be bolts. Um, so if we uh, let's let's start by just looking at an example uh, beam here and we'll just take a T-beam. I'm gonna draw it nice and uh, nice and big, a big chunky cross section here. Okay, and the rest of this beam is going off this way. This is this is just pretty much the same uh, concept that I was talking about in the uh, at the end of the last lecture with the example problem that we did there. So we've got two pieces of wood, and let's say they're joined with um, nails or screws here, right? So we've got. A row of nails or screws and they're going uh, down the length of the beam like this and the spacing in between the longitudinal spacing in between each nail is some variable distance uh, variable s um, and this beam is experiencing an internal shear force V so in terms of the relationship between um, shear force and shear stress that these nails are seeing, at the, at the location of the junction here, we know that there is going to be a shear force or a shear stress, sorry, that's oriented downward. And also the, the shear stress is going to have a component that is along the length of the beam as well and that's going to be equal equal magnitude um, now it's that shear stress that is parallel to the length that's acting to shear those nails or screws in half so when we're talking about uh, designing fasteners or analyzing fasteners and built-up beams you can be asking questions like for you know a given fastener and a given spacing what's the maximum internal shear force that uh, can be withstood by the beam or given some maximum internal shear force what does spacing need to be if the fasteners are chosen or if the fasteners need to be um, a certain distance apart because of design constraints and you know what the design internal shear force is then what does the strength of each individual fastener uh, need to be and um, and so those are the sort of questions that we can we can answer uh, like this now figuring out how to do that is, is really easy because we've done all the hard work of producing this equation um, for shear stress tau equals vq i divided by it that can give us the shear stress within a cross section at any height position um, that we want. So we know we can get what the value of tau is at the location of the nail uh, or screw using this equation. Now in, in this case, right, for this equation, our variable t here is the length of that line. Maybe that's a little bit unclear. Let's, uh, let's erase that there and we'll just erase that guy there so our variable t is the length of that line uh, which is that dimension there now if if we've got a single you know nail or single screw what that dimension is isn't particularly relevant to the amount of shear that that nail or screws going to need to withstand right um, the thickness could be a whole lot bigger and that doesn't matter um, if there's a, still only one nail or screw um, in, in the position. So what we do is actually um, take that thickness back out of the equation by multiplying it in by both sides. So we've got tau t equals vq divided by i. Now the product tau t what that gives us, so tau is shear stress which is um, of course, shear force uh, divided by area. 
So by multiplying back in by t, now what we have here is shear force per unit length of beam. So this is shear force per unit length of beam, right? So if, if that, let's say, is, for example, um, one kilonewton per meter, so one kilonewton of shear force per every meter length of beam, then if we have fasteners that have a shear capacity of one kilonewton, then we know that we need a fastener every meter because there's one kilonewton per meter of shear force that needs to be resisted. Or if we've got fasteners that have a shear capacity of 500 newtons, then we know that we need to have two of those in every meter to withstand the one kilonewton per meter of shear force. So we can replace that side of the equation by what the shear capacity of the fasteners is in uh, just in units of force, shear force, divided by their longitudinal spacing S. And we can set that equal to VQ over I, right? Um, and then the, the next consideration here to make this to make this equation even more useful is um, well what what would happen if instead of a T beam let's say that was held together by um, a single row of fasteners we had two rows of fasteners in parallel along the length holding those pieces of wood together, right? Then uh, how do we deal with that equation in the equation? And the, the answer is just simply to add um, a variable that describes the number of uh, parallel rows of fasteners that you have. So um, this, is, this is the equation that you can use to analyze um, the requirement of, of fasteners um, for built-up beams. So if we if we just go over the variables in that equation uh, quickly on the next page and um, redefine them just so you have them in text, which I always find is, is pretty useful, um, then it'll be clear what everything is. So let's copy that and just paste it over here. Okay. There we go. Uh, I'm going to erase these uh, tau's here and t's since those aren't uh, meaningful to us. And we'll erase that red line. There we go. Okay. So let's get our two pieces. There we go. And redraw our fastener. And great. And then we'll just take this. And here we go. Okay, so in this equation here, Vf is the shear capacity um, of each fastener. So shear capacity of each fastener, right? Um, so a screw, for example, might, uh, you know, be sold with a shear capacity of 500 pounds. Um, okay, uh, the number here is the number of rows of fasteners. So number of rows of fasteners. Okay, um, V is the internal shear force at the longitudinal location of interest. And of course, you're, you're almost always looking um, at the location where you the beam has the maximum internal shear force. Um, but V is just generally the internal shear force at your longitudinal location of interest. So internal shear force at longitudinal location 
of interest. Okay, um, and S. S is the longitudinal spacing of fasteners along the length of the beam. Longitudinal spacing of our fasteners. Okay, good, good. And then we've got I. So I has to be um, again, because the I is it's just like the equation for uh, transverse shear stress, I is the moment of inertia about the horizontal centroidal axis that's perpendicular to V. So here the horizontal centroidal axis is. So we've got I equals uh, centroidal. Uh, it should be moment of inertia. Let's try that again. Moment of inertia about centroidal axis that's perpendicular to the internal shear force that we're interested in v okay let's uh let's shift some stuff up here so we capture a little bit more space to work with Okay, there we go, and we can even um, we can even cheat a bit here and get some more space. Okay, let's make this dimension S here. Well, it would help if I took the whole thing. There we go. Okay. And now, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay, uh, what have we got left for variables? We've got Q. Q is a prime y bar prime. Okay, Q is Q is really the the you know thing that you want to think about here, and and it's you can figure out what that is. Um, but if you want, you know, if you're interested in the shearing of this fastener, then Q or a a prime needs to be chosen so that you've got a shear force at that interface where the fastener is being sheared. So here we want a prime is that area there, or a prime could be the the upright piece of the T as well. Um, either a either choice of a prime is going to give you the shear force at the interface um, where the two boards come together or where those fasteners are needing to withstand shearing. So in general, A prime needs to be um, a portion of the cross section that is only held on by fasteners, right? A single area of the cross section that's only held on by fasteners. Prime single area of our cross section that only held on by the fasteners. Okay, great. And then Y bar prime is the distance between the centroid of A prime and the overall uh, centroid of the cross section. So Y bar prime. So Y bar prime distance between the centroid of A prime and overall centroid of the cross section. Y bar prime distance between centroid of A prime and centroid of cross section. Wait, and I'm cheating a bit there in the description. It's really the perpendicular distance between the horizontal centroidal axis of A prime and the horizontal centroidal axis of the whole cross section if you're dealing with a vertical shear force. Um, 
Okay, so now we've got all those variables defined. Let's let's look at those choices of a prime uh, again once more. So if you've got again, if you've got something that's a T-shaped uh, beam here and it's uh, held on by fasteners, there you can choose your a prime as that location right that's a correct choice or you can choose uh, your a prime as the upright piece of the t that is an area that is only held on by fasteners so that's a correct choice as well um, if you had a channel section for example let's see uh, channel section maybe it's a channel section that's built up like this right one row here one row there of fasteners uh, going backwards so here uh, you could choose that as area a prime and as long as it was actually a channel section that um, both legs here were symmetric then uh, your calculation for one side is the same as the calculation for the other side so you choose that as a prime and that tells you uh, information that's good for both rows of fasteners um, again here the the number of rows of fasteners in this case is is one because your area a prime is held on by one row of fasteners um, or you could choose you could choose your top piece uh, in this option here right so here's our fasteners here's our fasteners and you could choose this as area a prime right so that's a correct choice and that's a correct choice you can do that if you want it's a single area it's only held on by fasteners uh, of course if you're doing um, the problem then the number of rows for this one equals two because that area is held on by two rows of fasteners where here the number of rows is equal to one um i beam let's see okay there's a pretty ugly i beam um fasteners let's say like uh like this okay um area a prime you could choose this area and if the I-beam is actually symmetrical, where both flanges are the same size, then uh, the calculation for one would give you the both rows of fasteners. If you've got an I-beam that isn't actually symmetrical, so maybe it's got a flange that's you know a little bit smaller at the bottom, then because area A prime would be different for that lower piece then you'd uh if you if you wanted you know fasteners that uh gave you an exact safety factor or something then you'd you'd do separate calculations for them both in practice you just do the calculation for the uh the set that was going to give you the um that was going to need to withstand the most shear force and then uh then your other ones would be a little bit safer um but let's go back there um okay so let's look at the other option right so that's a correct option what we've just chosen there then your other option here area a prime where your fasteners are like this okay area a prime okay now this this actually poses a problem um you've got so according to my previous you know instructions on the on the page about what's an appropriate a prime or what a prime needs to be this is an area of the beam that's only held on by fasteners it's a single area and it's only held on by fasteners um but you actually you can't choose this because when you look at the value of q here is a prime y bar prime 
y bar prime is the distance between the centroid of a prime and the centroid of the whole cross section. And the centroid of a prime lies exactly at the centroid of the whole cross section. So y bar prime in this case is uh, zero. So q goes to zero and then the, the equation fails um, in this case. So you don't want to choose an area a prime that has a centroid location that is the same as the overall centroid location for the cross section. Okay, so that's that's the deal with choosing what area to a what area of a prime to use for these problems. Okay, so um, there's there's really not much more to it than that. It's it's pretty pretty basic. Um, so let's let's just do an example problem um, to show how this works. And the example is not overly complicated here. It's just mainly showing you how, how we put in the numbers. Um, so let's say that we have an I beam here and it's a you know a big chunky I beam. That's basically we had a you know a beam of wood and we just need to strengthen it a little bit. So we add on some pieces of wood to the top and the bottom. And we're going to join those by uh, three fasteners in parallel here. So we've got three rows running in parallel like that. Okay, and the same deal for the bottom. Right? We've got one fastener, two fastener, three fastener. There's their heads. Okay. Um, and of course, we'd see another line there and another line there. Okay, um, so let's put on some dimensions for this beam here. So we've got one inch boards at the top and bottom that are both 12 inches uh, in width. And then we'll say that this here is six inches and it has a height of 12 inches as well. So we're going to say that this, um, this is going to be assembled with screws that have a shear capacity of 1,050 pounds. And we're going to say that the maximum internal shear force is already being calculated from the shear diagram as 18 kip. And what we want to know is what is the required longitudinal spacing S for a safety factor of 2.5 and we want to round that to the nearest quarter inch so let's let's just put that information uh, on here so screws each have shear capacity of 1050 pounds okay uh, if our maximum internal shear force is 18 kip. Then what is the required spacing S for a safety factor equal to 2.5 question mark? Round to nearest quarter inch it's supposed to be one quarter there we go looks better all right so no no tricks here right so our number our equation is the number of rows of fasteners the shear capacity of the fasteners divided by longitudinal spacing equals vq over i okay um, now if we're dealing with the safety factor Right. If we if we're dealing with a safety factor of two, what we're really saying is that we're assuming that the fasteners are half as strong as they are, or the shear force might be twice as big as it, it really is. So um, we want to put the safety factor under there, um, or you could multiply uh, v by the safety factor on the other side of the equation. But I always like to put it in the denominator on the left hand side to be consistent with where we put the safety factor when we're doing our other equations for stress. 
Okay, so let's um, let's just put in our numbers and uh, and get to it here. So the number of rows is three in this case because um, for every unit length of um, of beam, we've got three times the number of fasteners. So we've got uh, three here, and then the shear capacity of each fastener, we've got that as ten fifty. Uh, our safety factor is 2.5. We're looking for our spacing S. And of course, that's going to come out in inches. Uh, then we have on the other side of the equation, the maximum shear force, 18 times 10 to the 3 to put kips into pounds. Q here. Um, so when again, whenever you're doing problems where you're using the equation for transverse shear stress or this equation that comes out of that, you always want to do a little sketch and show the area that you're using for A prime because without knowing what area you're using for A prime, then, then it's, uh, you know, the, the numbers are hard to follow or if you make a mistake, it's impossible to tell if you actually, you know, kind of knew what you were doing or not, and maybe you totally knew what you were doing and you just made you know, a numerical error. So you need, need to show what area A prime you're using. So here we want an area that's only held on by fasteners um, whose centroid does not exist at the location of the overall centroid. So what you wanna do is choose either the top bit or the bottom bit as A prime, there we go. And then your distance y bar prime becomes the distance from the centroid of A prime to the centroid of the overall cross section, which is that distance y bar prime there. So A prime is what, 12 inches by one inch. And we'll just add the annotation there for you. Um, and then y bar prime is going to be what half of 12, which is six, and then a half of one, so six and a half. Okay, so this here is y bar prime divided by i. Okay, i for an i beam about the horizontal centroidal axis. You want this, so remember you want to calculate i about the centroidal axis that's perpendicular to our shear force, and we weren't uh, actually shown the shear force in the question, uh, or I didn't draw it on, but if it's missing, it's sort of implied that it's vertical. So here we go, v max. So if we had a vertical, or assuming that the internal shear force is vertical, um, then we want the horizontal centroidal axis there. So that's easy. Right, because we can do the I beam as the whole outside subtract the gap regions. So let's do that. So we've got 1 12th um, for the whole outside, the base is 12, the height is 12, 13, 14. Cube that and then subtract off the missing uh, area. So we've got 1 12th, the base, the combined base length is 12 minus 6 is 6. And the height is 12. Okay, cube that. Okay, so out of that, we only have our variable s. That's an s, not a 5 down there. So our variable s that gives us the longitudinal spacing comes out to be 1.687 inches. Now we wanted this to be rounded to the nearest quarter inch. So you've got the choice between what? rounding um, up to 1.75 or rounding down to 1.5. Now 1.75 is closer, um, but increasing the longitudinal spacing is going to decrease the safety factor. Right. Um, if we space these farther apart, that means every individual uh, fastener has to take more shear force, so our safety factor is going to fall below 2.5. So in these problems, you need to uh, remember that putting the fasteners closer together within reason. Of course, if you put them infinitely close together, then you don't have any material left. Um, but putting the fasteners closer together and having more of them uh, enables the, the structure to withstand a higher shear force at that interface. So we need to round this down. So this is going down to one and a half inches. 
Okay, so that's all there is to it. So I told you it was a uh, it was a short lecture, and um, and it was. So next time when we see each other or talk to each other or you hear from me, um, we'll be looking at lecture number 13, which is where we start the third uh, sort of section of the course. And we start looking at how do we take the stresses um, from all these different internal forces that we've learned about and um, think about combining them together to present what the overall stress state is at a particular point in an object. So that lecture is going to be all about combined loading. So I will talk to you or see you for that.